Am I audible? Can you all hear me? Excellent. Uh, awesome. So uh, my name is Sean Olszewski. I work for Pivotal in Kendall Square. We do a bunch of stuff. I see some people from my meetup, other meetups, so I'll be a little bit brief on that. Uh, today I'm here to talk to you about a tool I've been building called Muter, which practices something called mutation testing, which is something I'm very excited about. Um, as I said to you, I work at Pivotal. I'm an engineering practice lead. That means I think a lot about how people build software. I'm very concerned with how teams work, how people work. I run Learn Swift Boston, and as I've said, I build Muter. There's a photo of me in case you couldn't see me. So you may be saying, Sean, cool, you're going to talk to us about something. Why should we care about mutation testing? Why should we care about what you have to say to us today? I think there's three reasons. Mutation testing gives you a metric to tell how effective your test suite is. It helps you identify how you can improve your test suite. And, it, and in the event that your test suite regresses, it doesn't tell you things that it should anymore, you can pinpoint the time and cause. I haven't even told you what I'm going to talk to you about, but these are three reasons why I think you should care. So what exactly is mutation testing? It's got a fancy name. A mutation test is a test for your tests. It helps you make sure your tests are going to fail when you would expect them to. In other words, it helps you identify if your tests catch bugs. And it'll also show you the instances when your tests don't fail and you would expect them to. It does this by introducing changes into your source code. In other words, if your source code changes and your tests don't fail, you didn't write good tests. And we want a way to, tell, to do this automatically. When we change the program through mutation testing, these programs are then called mutants. I don't know why. Uh, there's a lot of puns on X-Men here. What's kind of interesting and has been researched is that the way that mutation testing will change your programs mimic realistic software errors. So the bugs that they introduce are actually validated by scientific research. For example, one way we may change your source code to introduce a bug changes in a quality operator. So if you have an if statement that looks like this, after mutation testing, it'll look like that. That if statement is not going to execute in the same way we would expect. And if you're writing automated tests, we would hope that your test suite catches this issue. After uh, a mutation test changes your source code, it's going to run your tests. But it'll make these changes one at a time. So it'll change it, run your tests. Change it, run your tests. If your test suite fails, which is what we hope it does, we, we call this killing the mutant. Because otherwise we would have to say test passes because your tests failed. And that's confusing and confuse contributors to muter. We obviously want your test suite to kill the mutant. The key thing with mutation testing is it's going to generate this metric for you to use to analyze how your test suite is behaving. And this is called a mutation score. A mutation score by many tools, muter being one of them, will be generated for your entire test suite as well as the individual files within your code base. It's a very simple ratio. It's the number of mutants that were killed over the total number of mutants that were introduced. You want it to be 100. It's usually not possible. Muter doesn't have a score of 100. Uh, last time I checked, uh, for the whole test suite, it was around 85. Uh, it's cheap, and that's OK. If you have a low mutation score, what that tells you, and why this matters, is that you need to write different assertions or write test cases that would drive out that issue within your test suite. This is an example of what a report from Muter looks like. We have the mutation score in the center there of uh, the overall test suite, and then we see particular files in the, in the code base ranked from highest to somewhat lowest uh, score. It tells you the number of changes that were applied to each file uh, to then help you identify what parts of the code you need to look at to figure out how to improve. This is a truncation of the report because it's actually a lot longer, and it's a slide and I have five minutes, so this is the crash course for you. More importantly, though, Muter integrates with Xcode and will actually show you on the line of your Swift code uh, what actually did not cause your test suite to fail. And it'll tell you how it modified that line of code. So you, what you can do is you can plug Muter into Xcode, run it, and then see the exact line numbers and column numbers of your code that did not fail your test suite. Now, if you pay attention to automated testing at all, you may be asking how a mutation score differs from code coverage, because that's like this metric we hear a lot about. It's this metric we care a lot about. 
And you can think of code, code coverage as an indicator of what percentage of your code is exposed to your test suite. That's it. It's possible to have 100% code coverage and a zero mutation score. And the reason for that is because a mutation score is a measure of how your test suite interacts with your production code. So if all you do is have like a UI test that walks through every part of your app but never makes an assertion, you can have 100% code coverage but a zero mutation score. The second you add an assertion, you're not going to have a zero 0% zero mutation score. So that's pretty sick, Sean. You went through this really quick. Uh, I don't write any Swift code. I, clearly you like this, but I don't care because I don't do iOS development. Well, the good news is this is a practice that's been around since the 70s. There's a tool for most of the major production languages out there. And I'm going to share some of them with you right now. So there's Muter for Swift code. It's the only tool that does Swift. If you do TypeScript, .NET, Scala, JavaScript, there's Striker. I've used Striker on projects before. Uh, right now, Striker is sort of leading the wave of how we can standardize reports for this and how we can make it very user-friendly to use. For JVM languages, which includes Scala, Kotlin, um, uh, Java, of course, you have PIT or PyTest, which is sort of the canonical standard for a lot of this stuff. And if you do C, C++ using LLVM compilers, uh, you can use Mull. I've chatted with the Mull guys. They're really smart, really friendly, happy to help you out. Uh, and, and a lot of these folks are also willing to help you get this stuff set up if you're confused. On I write, and I want to contribute. What can I do? We have a contributing guide on GitHub. Uh, it's me and about two or three other developers who work on this uh, mostly. You can check out our contributing guide to get an understanding of how we're looking for help and what we expect people to be able to do. You can also uh, open an issue on GitHub if you're interested in helping out or need help getting Muter set up. And so that was a whirlwind tour of how I spend all of my weekends and what I read on the weekends. So uh, thank you. I don't think we have time because it's the lightning talk format, but come find me afterwards and I'd be happy to chat with you more about this. Thank you very much. And also, hit me up on Twitter and there's a link in the bottom left for you to actually download Muter. Thanks.